first of all, uh, I read that you're an Army veteran yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about your Army service? Certainly. Uh, yes, I was in the Army for 10 years. Uh, I graduated from West Point in 1986, and I was an Army uh, engineer, so I was in the Corps of Engineers. I did various sort of, sort of things in the Engineer Corps. Combat engineering, construction engineering, topographic engineering, some facilities engineering. Uh, I had a UN tour in Bosnia uh, during that time. Uh, and then I also was called back into the uh, active army from GE after 9 11. And I spent a year at Ground Zero helping with the cleanup um, for, as, a, as a reservist in New York City. So. Were you a reservist here in the area as well? Before that? I actually, I'm, in, I'm from Chicago. Okay. So I live in Chicago, and I was called up from from home, from Chicago, okay. and sent to New York for that. For that I read that um, you were part of the 20th Combat Engineer Brigade yes. at one point. Yes. My husband worked with them on his first tour, and actually they've just oh. come over. My husband's in Afghanistan at the moment, and they've wow. just come over and uh, taken over their battalion at the moment. So. Excellent. Just, yeah, that's where I did my company command with the 20th Engineer Brigade. So very good. Very good. What made GE act on creating this program, and why with veterans? Well, veterans, as, as a few people said on stage today, are just an untapped resource. Um, we've got over 10,000 veterans that work within GE right now in the U.S., and we know what wonderful employees they are. Um, they bring to the table, right from the get-go, the ability to think on their feet, make decisions, function under stress, they're very good at working in teams, they take direction well, they're quick learners, um, they come to work on time, you know, <laughs> they just have a sense of mission that we really appreciate as a company. And, you know, just the track record of the 10,000 we already have wants, you know, makes us want to bring more veterans into uh, into our workforce. And then, you know, with the uh, drawdown in the military, there's going to be just this huge pool of talent coming back. We want to grow and increase American competitiveness in manufacturing as a company and obviously as part of this coalition. So you've got this great group of talent that can, you know, take us to the next level in American manufacturing and, and continue to grow our business. So it just makes good business sense. Yeah. So, uh, aside from what you just mentioned, what do you feel GE will gain uh, will uh, as a result of this program? Well, we're going to get a lot of, hopefully, new, fabulous employees, like I said. But we've also, you know, within the manufacturing environment, we've got an aging workforce. So we've got the, um, you know, folks that are going to be retiring in the next 5, 10, 15 years. So we get a new group of fabulous employees that are Army veterans coming in, you know, into our manufacturing arenas at the, you know, at the entry level, per se. And, and we can keep them with us for a long uh, career. We have done some data analysis and we've discovered that our veterans within the company are 7% more likely to stay with GE than our non-veteran employees. So they're loyal and they, you know, they seem to want to stay with, with the company and, and complete the mission. So that's obviously good for, good for us. Yes. Um, is GE willing to work with other companies and share their model for this oh, program? Okay. So that other companies can follow suit, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, we've got the small coalition now with Alcoa, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and ourselves. And then the idea is obviously to continue to bring more companies in, more manufacturing companies in particular. And once we really kind of get this thing moving and rolling, you know, then we can expand that to different types of industries and everything else. So it's been a lot of interest in it. So, What would you tell other employers about this experience? Well, you know, I think that if we get more employers involved, once again, there's more supply of veterans than the demand that we're going to have with the small coalition we have now. You know, most companies um, have veterans in their workforce already and should, you know, have this knowledge of what great employees they are. So we grow the coalition, we, we add more companies, you know, we get a lot of these programs going, and it can just be like a smooth transition from veterans coming back from, uh, you know, from the theater of war in Afghanistan and, you know, transition out of the service right into one of these programs, get them employed. I mean, it's just a, a boon for our economy in general and, and obviously these employers that are participating. I was going to say, exciting. I know with my husband's unit getting ready, they're on the downside of deployment, so they're on their, they'll are on they be coming home soon. Would it be something that, although they may still be serving in the reserve or the guard, that they could get involved with this program? and Because you know, some of those guys lost their jobs because of the economy prior to deployment. 
Well, we have got, I, I, and I apologize, I don't have a number in my head right now, but we've got a number of our, our veterans, maybe up to a few thousand that are still in the reserves of the Guard with a GE. And we support, you know, we support that activity. We support them, you know, doing their training. Uh, we support them if they deploy. We've got a system in place to take take care of their families, to give them the salary differential while they're gone. So we, we've got a lot of Guardsmen in reservists already, so definitely not a hindrance at all. Okay. Now, as we were reading about this program, I noticed the term advanced manufacturing a lot. Can you tell us what is advanced manufacturing? The term kind of refers to the fact that it's not your grandfather's manufacturing or it's not your father's manufacturing. That's my kind of silly way of putting it. But manufacturing today is much more technical and much more computer-based, and I'm not a technical person myself, per se, even though I'm an engineer, you know, but it's not assembly line, you know, putting one screw in, putting two screws in, it's way more tied to understanding computers, understanding, um, you know, uh, being able, having to make decisions about keeping the, you know, keeping things running and that sort of thing, um, very technical skills that tie really to this generation that, that, you know, that would be obviously getting out of the service that have grown up with computers and I hate to see a video game, it always comes to mind. But they have a knack for that sort of thing and it's it's not assembly line work, mind, you know, you know mind numbing, doing the same thing over and over again. It's a lot more clean manufacturing, a lot more, you know, small teams working on assembly line by themselves, a lot more independent type of work as opposed to something you think of when you think of it. Okay. That was a very long answer, and I'm not sure I answered it very well, but just... It helps us understand, actual, yeah. You know, now, what other states and schools are on board with this program? Well, this is obviously the first pilot that we've had in graduation, or a completion ceremony for. The next place we're going to launch it is in Fort Worth, Texas, and that's coming up in a couple weeks. There's some schools already involved in kind of the planning process. So Fort Worth will be next. After that will be Houston. Uh, Greenville, uh, South Carolina, Schenectady, New York, and Durham, North Carolina. Those are kind of the GE targets okay. for this year. Um, and our other partners have got different, obviously, areas of the country where they're more prevalent, and they'll kind of take the lead in other parts of the country, but that's where we're focusing. Great. Now, we noticed last month that um, KRC, Local 12, on their website, they did an article, and they mentioned four certificates that the uh, the those who are taking part in it can earn. What are those four certificates that they will get through the program? I'm not the sure. four cert- the okay. certification. Right. They're, they they s- get the certified production technician certificate. That's uh-huh. the only one that's offered okay. right now. So that's why I was sorry. I was confused. It's a four week program. Okay. And they do four different modules. Of modules. Okay. I guess is the better word. But it's it, they come out with a certified production okay. technician certificate. Okay. Is there like a little cert- uh, certification for each of those modules? Maybe that's what they. Maybe that's what they. I apologize. Okay. I'm just like. Oh, oh no, you're fine. <laughs> and I'm not from here, so I didn't. I don't know that news source. You know. So anyway. It's okay. It's our sorry local. About that. No, yeah. you're fine. Um, now, what is your job rate placement in general with veterans with higher education, and what are you hoping to have it be through this program? Um, so we hope to. Obviously, we're working on placing all of these folks right now. Mm-hmm. I know four of them are in the active interview process. Actually, I've picked up five of them are in the active interview process right now. Keeping in mind they had to pass all their final exams and everything else before they really started that process. I know t- of two I've been told are considering staying in school. So, and then the other uh, six, two, three <laughs> are still evaluating you know, whether they want to continue on and looking at the different jobs. Um, the idea is that we will... You know, we have a program manager for the program is here at Cincinnati State, mm-hmm. Christine Yancey, that she will be, and she's relatively new. She's kind of brought on board in mid-class for this class. So the idea is that she will work with each of the graduates, um, and, you know, each of the students as they're in the program, put their resume together, and try to make it a smooth transition to get them getting the points as soon as they get out. Okay. Now, in general, for GE, we're also committed as a company to hiring a thousand veterans a year for the next five years. That was our declaration wow. earlier this year. So we're working. We're work, So we're working. That's a whole separate. It's not separate, but you know what I mean. That's just in general. We want to hire this many along with this. Well, that's awesome. Um, why do you think that this? program may be more successful for veterans versus other programs as far as job placement? We hope 
that the well the idea is that we find out what skills are needed in a specific market, like here, obviously, and we actually put together curriculum that meets the needs of open jobs in that area. Okay. So you're training for an open job as opposed to training for, you know, like some folks go back to school and they get a general degree and it's not for a specific, if that makes any sense. And then the idea of having this specific placement program, the companies, in, you know, the local companies know about the program, know that the graduates are in school, they're going to graduate on such and such a day, they're available for you, it's a skill you need. Trying to put all of the dominoes in place so that it's a smooth, smooth transition. Great. Um, and finally, what are some of the barriers to corporate sponsorship in these types of programs? Time and resources. You know, having companies put kind of the brain power, leg power, um, you know, effort to, to really bring this together. This was a lot of work for some folks here in Cincinnati, obviously, working with between Cincinnati State and GE. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's got to be a commitment to, to really want to do that. But once again, we are trying to, you know, fill that gap in advanced manufacturing in general across the country, fill the gap in advanced manufacturing for ourselves also. Um, you know, we know American competitiveness is tied to manufacturing. So, you know, once again, we're trying to really streamline this as best we can and design it so we're training people in skills that are needed for open positions in that same market. You know, so it's it's going to flow nicely. But it just takes a lot of effort to figure that out and then make it make it a smooth a smooth um, smooth road. Great. Well, thank I don't you. think there's any barriers, but you know, <laughs> you have to be willing to commit the resources and the time to yeah. do that. And the funding, too. Yeah.